What's up YouTube? Today I want to show you a little UVI Falcon Pro tip. So this utilizes the layer rules. Basically the concept is I want to create a template and just have a knob that selects all my different base multi-sample patches. I was previously using a different plugin. It was a free sampler, but I mean I have Falcon so I might as well use the capabilities and you know I thought in doing so show you guys a couple of the kind of like advanced features that it offers for this kind of thing. So this is not limited to base. You can do this for synths and all sorts of stuff to create like, uh, you know, multi like banks of your favorite sounds that you use often. You can just select through them. Um, and you're also not limited to using a knob. You can use keys and all sorts of stuff. But I'm going to stick to the kind of like concept of base patches for this video. Anyway, let's dive in and have a look. So I'm not going to explain all the features of Falcon in this video. I have done a couple of videos on the plugin. Um, but for quick reference, I'm just going to explain that it's kind of like an all-in-one synth and multi-sample engine. It can do everything from synthesis to, uh, you know, various key group multi-sample stuff, similar to kind of like contact. But imagine if, you know, somebody took contact and mixed it into phase plant and serum and all those kinds of things. So it's kind of got the best of all those different worlds. So kind of what I want to do for this video is I've got a track here that I've been working on and I think it's time to put in a bass line. It's actually an older track. I had a couple of the melodies and sounds and stuff already made and when I dived into it again the bass wasn't working. So I figured this is a great opportunity to actually recreate um, a kind of multi-sample bass patch using a bunch of the samples that I actually use quite regularly these days and in doing so this is going to make you know creating further tracks from this you know sort of template a lot easier. So anyway, um, how does this work? This is basically our uh, key group section. So say, for example, you know, I've got a bunch of multi sampled, you know, single note based samples that I've bounced out um, of serum and face plant and stuff of bases that I've made. So what I want to do here is, you know, as you can see, I've, some of them says uh, processed or proc. Some of them say raw or needs gain, etc. So the cool thing about this is each of these layers allows you the ability to kind of create a bunch of presets on those layers. And then when you recall the multi, you can kind of just choose the patch and it's ready to go. But I'm going to dive into a little bit further about that later. So just quickly, what I want to do is I want to drop all of these notes down into my key groups. So if you see, if you move up and down, the amount of notes that it kind of triggers that note goes up and down. But we only want one note per sample. So um, we want to drop this. I think it's C1. We want to make sure we drop it like this. So each note has one sample. It does help to actually name your samples when you're bouncing them. A couple of times I haven't done that. And then it's been a nightmare afterwards trying to find what is actually going on. So anyway, I just want to see if I'm triggering the correct notes here. Cool, that sounds good. And also for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm quickly just going to turn off my sidechain that's happening there with LFO tool. Cool, nice bare bones base patch. However, you know, I want the ability to kind of sweep between or, or choose different base patches much easier than, you know, having to file, load, file, load. You know, I want them all loaded in one multi and I can kind of just sweep and find the base that suits the track. And I find that that's gonna be a little bit more of an intuitive process. So here, what we can do is we can jump over to the tree section. If you see on the top left here, you've got parts, tree and list. So parts allows you to obviously add multiple different parts in your track uh, or in, in your instrument. So you could have like a kick and a bass going um, and send them out to different audio tracks and stuff. But I'm going to maybe dive into that a little bit in a future episode. Uh, let me know if you do want that kind of thing. So here we can jump over to the tree and we can right click on the program and we can say add layer. So now you see we've got layer one and we've got layer two. When we select layer two, the key groups that we had dropped in disappear. So Essentially, this allows us the ability to, you know, either layer up samples and trigger them at the same time or create rules in which each of the layers works in. So just while I get everything sorted to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to mute this first layer and then we can go to layer two and drop in a couple of samples over here. Cool, that's working. And now let's rinse and repeat this process until we have all of our layers with all of our base notes in it. So I'm going to mute this, create a new layer. Uh, I'm just going to remember which ones I've used. So use based five and full on. Okay, so I'm just going to go sequentially now. I want to go from the bottom up because this one actually sounds pretty cool, but it needs processing. We can actually jump into the list and edit the names of each layer. 
Oh, I must add these. So then let's add these notes here, starting at C1. Yep. Let's just see if they're triggering the correct note. Cool. So as you can see, that one's volume is lower because when I rendered it out of the synth, I didn't actually turn the volume up, which I usually, you know, set it to zero just so I get a nice fat sample out of it. So we're going to have to go in and apply some gain onto that layer just so that it's, you know, easier to use uh, in context. But, you know, like I said, the ability to name these layers means that we can go in later and do that kind of thing and we don't forget what's actually going on. Um, very, very intuitive synth. It takes a little bit of time to learn how the things work, but once you start to learn it, you can create these templates and it just makes life a lot easier. Um, you know, when, when, when producing, you have everything, you can kind of just press a few buttons. I feel it makes it a little bit more intuitive for getting that creativity out. Anyway, so let's put in Chunky Raw. Cool, let's name that one chunky raw and then let's put in our last one i think this is like one of the first multi-sample patches i'd ever made base one raw so we have all our layers how do we go about creating a parameter to sweep between selecting all of these layers so if we go over to the list again and you see this little spanner over here this allows you to edit layer rules and this layer rules thing pops up its own like sort of a uh, side window and if you right click here you can say add root rule and then you can right click again add sub rule so here you can click on none and then it allows you to drop down and let's say midi cc so for those who don't know the kind of like general midi cc zero the parameter zero is actually for uh, preset for changing the bank so let's go with that one uh, just to make things a little bit easier, you know, for remembering it later on down the line. So here what we want to do is we want to go to the top and then add sub rule again, add sub rule again, add sub rule again, add sub rule. So we've got five sub rules under the MIDI CC0. So you'll notice each one has a little slider next to it. So let's say, for example, set this to 0 to 30. Let's set this one from 31 to 60 and then 61 to 90. And then 91 to, ugh, we, it's not going to be even, but doesn't matter, 110. And then 110 to, or let's say 111 to 127. So obviously if you have more layers, you can create, you know, one parameter, or one value per layer, etc. So these sliders determine at which value it switches to that layer. Um, or we haven't actually set the layer rule yet. So here what we want to do is in each of these, for example, click on this one and then target the first layer then click on the second one and target the second layer third the third layer etc until you have each rule targeting one of the layers and then we can just go back and make sure each one okay cool that's working now we can exit the layer rules menu and we can go to the tree unmute all of these over here okay that seems to be the setup process is done so now what we can do is we can head over to cubase and on MIDI inserts, you can add a MIDI control MIDI insert. So what this allows us to do is actually send MIDI values to any synth we want. Um, we can modulate this, you know, if there's limited uh, control within a plugin, uh, you can use this to kind of like add control to the plugin and stuff. I'm gonna do more in-depth episodes on each of the MIDI inserts and stuff in future Cubase tutorials, but those don't seem to be as popular on my channel as the kind of plugin stuff. So I've kind of like fended off on those for a little bit, but anyway. Uh, back to the video. If we set this parameter to CC0 bank cell, bank select, this little parameter over here becomes our base preset selector. Let's check if this works. So keep in mind, each layer has you know, quite a varying sound. So now what we can do is we can go in there, you know, and edit these layers so that, you know, each one is a desirable sound. So first and foremost, I think the most uh, important, I think chunky is a little bit loud, but plucky needs gain, definitely needs gain. So what we can do is we can actually select all of these samples and just gain it up on the sample level, you know, before any of the parameters and stuff here. Um, let's just see if this is enough now.
Okay, we did get it closer with that gain up. So then let's move on to the next one, which I think was, was it 90 and above? Then the last one is also quite low in volume as well. Okay, so let's move on to some processing. So for those who don't know, I use Curve EQ for a lot of the kind of referencing and stuff on my channel. These are a couple of the kind of raw baseline and some other tracks that have kind of like imprinted onto this reference. This white one obviously has a lot more low end, um, closer to the stuff that we have here. So what I wanna do is I wanna try create, you know, a closer tone with most of these sounds, you know, to the reference. So obviously the first one, which is processed sounds, you know, pretty decent already but then let's go on to full-on raw which is uh, the second one so let's move over to like 31 I think and we can apply some EQ onto this layer by pressing effect over here equalizer digital EQ and then we can choose default Anyways, I'm not gonna go through the last two, you guys get the picture. Um, we can process each of those individually. So then, for example, if we're trying to fit it into context, all we need to do is sweep through which of these presets we think sounds the best. I think there's some delay on number three. I think that was one of the first ones that I had also, that I had rendered out as well. So what we can do actually, dive into these, and there's a sample start point, uh, actually number three. Let's not forget to select number three. And we've got a sample start point, which we can very, very finely tune. I think number one, I think number one sounds the best. Or maybe that one sounds the best, I actually don't know now, but yeah, I've made the template, that's what matters, what we can do now. Um, I can always come back to it with fresh ears and see which one suits. So, and fine tune it, of course, because um, it's probably not gonna sound amazing, but the concept works. So now what we can do is save multi and samples as, and then we wanna save it into a place where we can recall it later, of course. 
Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't yet. See you guys next time. Cheers.